Welcome to Young Black Lives Honored. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Let me know your thoughts about this case in the comment section below. On April 29th, 1971, Carol was beaming with pride as she welcomed her bouncing baby girl into the world. Little did she know that just 13 years later, she would have questions that would take over 20 years to be answered. The baby girl was named Kelly Jean Harris, and she spent her early years in Pasadena, Maryland with her father. In the summer of 1984, she traveled to Jackson, Michigan to spend time with her mother and stepfather, Carol and Leonard Hugo. It was arranged that in the fall of 1984, she would move to California to stay with her great aunt. Sadly, those plans would never come to fruition. Kelly vanished on August 10th, 1984. On that day, Harris was annoyed at her mother and stepfather because they refused to let her attend a local county fair. Prior to leaving for work at Motel Jackson, Carol stated that she instructed her daughter to move her bicycle from the front of the house to the backyard. Her husband dropped her off that day. Around 2 p.m., Carol returned home but could not find Kelly. She began to worry and went to her mother's house crying. Carol recalled that Leonard did not show any emotion during this time. When the mother reported it to the police, they initially deemed Kelly a runaway. Her bike was located at Ella Sharp Park, approximately a five-minute drive from the 100 block of Lincoln Court, where she was staying with her mother. At some point early in the investigation, authorities believed Kelly bought herself a bus ticket to Detroit, and a witness claimed to have seen the teen making her way onto a bus. Carol was questioned repeatedly by investigators and described as cooperative. However, Leonard, not so much. He refused to take a polygraph test and detectives soon learned that Leonard had a history of child station and acts of violence. He had been in and out of mental institutions since the age of 13, according to his mother. The man reportedly told authorities that he believed Kelly ran away, but that didn't stop him from being identified as a person of interest when police deemed the case a disappearance. Carol admitted that her daughter's relationship with Hugo was a tumultuous one and reportedly believed from the beginning that he was behind Kelly's disappearance. At the time, Kelly Harris was 5 feet 5 inches tall and weighed approximately 100 pounds. She had black or dark brown hair and brown eyes. She also had a gap between her upper front teeth. Four years later in 1988, one last time, Carol looked her husband in the eyes and asked what he did to her daughter. According to her, he bent down to tie his shoe before getting into his car and driving off erratically. That was the final straw. Carol no longer wanted anything to do with him. Their divorce was finalized in 1994. During that time, Leonard did not stay out of trouble. In 1993, he found himself at the mercy of the law and was convicted of sexual battery, burglary, and other related charges. Hugo was sentenced to 50 years in prison for inappropriate actions and fatalities of a five-year-old girl and her mother in Florida. Over the years that followed, Leonard was repeatedly questioned about his knowledge of Kelly's disappearance. Finally, in 2006, two years after her case had been reopened, he began divulging details. Court documents showed that Hugo confessed to authorities that he told the 13-year-old that he would take her to the county fair, however, that was a lie. Instead, he kicked her and took her to St. John's School, where he worked at the time, and had inappropriate relations with her. According to him, he then put her in the trunk of his vehicle, drove out near Jackson Community College, and then stabbed her until she was gone. He claimed to have buried her. On October 1st, 2007, 
Florida Governor Charlie signed an executive agreement with Michigan Governor Jennifer to have Hugo transported to Michigan State Police custody for three days to assist with looking for Kelly's remains. Unfortunately, investigators were unsuccessful in finding her. Subsequent forensic testing is said to have been conducted in the case. Hugel is scheduled to be released by 2035, and if he is still alive, he will be extradited to Michigan and formally charged in Kelly Harris's case. Unfortunately, as of this video, her remains have not been found, and authorities believe that due to the elements and wildlife, they may never be found. Carol has struggled with her daughter's disappearance over the years, finding different ways to cope. For example, on the 25th anniversary of her disappearance, the mother visited the fallen victims of Homicide Memorial wearing a purple shirt, Kelly's favorite color. She said she often wondered what her daughter would have grown up to be. She described the 13-year-old as feisty but loving especially to her younger sister, Kristen. The mother said her daughter liked drinking Tang and watching videos of Michael Jackson. Anyone with information about this case, or Leonard Hugo, is urged to contact the Jackson County Sheriff's Office at 517-768-7900 or your local authorities. The case number is 77 nine six eight four may the family and friends of kelly harris find solace in the happy memories and may her soul rest in perpetual peace thank you